cartilage is a complex living tissue that lines the bony surface of joints and acts like a shock absorber. It can be damaged by disease and injury. If cartilage has a good blood supply, it can heal itself. Cartilage without a ready source of blood cannot heal and the damage can cause crippling pain. Currently, treatment options involve removal or joint replacement if the damage is too severe. James Cook, Associate Professor of Small Animal and Orthopedic Surgery for the University of Missouri, is hoping to one day replace plastic or metal implants with living tissue grown in a special Petri dish. Dr. Cook says the ability to use living tissue in joint repair will provide a better treatment option for younger patients. And that's really where this solution hits home to the biggest degree, I think, because those people faced with the prospect of metal and plastic joints are talking about three, four surgeries really in their lifetime based on the longevity of those types of implants. And those implants are not going to allow them to do all the things they want to do really in terms of an active lifestyle and are not going to get better as they age, are not going to respond to the things that their bodies want to do. Over 5 million young Americans suffer from osteoarthritis, typically caused by military service or sports. Dr. Cook says this research will really benefit younger patients because the living tissue will grow and change with the body. That's really, really the key. The metal and plastic joints, the best they're ever going to be is the day you put them in because from there on out, they're breakdown products, they're potentially loosening, they're wearing, and they don't replace themselves with wear. Whereas if our theory and if what we've shown so far continues to work in the real life situation in veterinary and human patients, then it will actually get better with time. Now, that doesn't mean that we can throw rehab out the window. We can throw all the other aspects of joint management out the window, but the potential is there for it to get better instead of getting worse with time and really avoid multiple future surgeries is also our big hope. Dr. Cook says we often don't realize that cartilage is living tissue. And that really is a difficulty in what we're doing because it is a tissue that has to be so mechanical in nature. But what we haven't really thought about for such a long time is the real biology or the living nature of it. We think of it as more of just a bearing surface like the metal and plastic. But in fact, that's the downfall. If we do think of it that way, or if we try and replace it with those things, we don't really take into account everything that it does. It is very living, very viable, and has to be that way to respond to all the forces we put on it and to be able to stand up to the activities that we really want to do long term. Dr. Cook has been working working with implanting grown living tissue into the damaged joints of dogs. All the problems with metal and plastic joints are something that we've really tried to address over time. The fact that it affects our veterinary species was a really good springboard for that. We just started way back with my PhD work to say, can we grow truly functional tissue? I mean, not something that looks like cartilage, but that could actually function in the body. And then this whole process has been turning it into something that could really be applicable. And we've shown, in fact, that it can work in the real live body, in this case, first of all, in dogs. Dr. Cook says working on joint repair in dogs is a great first step because our four-legged friends suffer from similar types of joint damage. That's what's so great about it, honestly, for me as a veterinarian, is that not only can we develop it for humans by using dogs, but then we can help them first. And so the types of injuries, the types of developmental problems, the types of aging problems that occur in dogs and actually horses are exactly like in humans. So it's a win-win in all respects. They actually test the tissue before it's implanted by making it walk, lift weight, run. That's really a neat thing in the last few years that have allowed us to progress to the point that we're at, and that is that not only can we grow this living tissue and make it be alive, stay alive, but we can let it function like it's going to have to in the body. And so these bioreactors allow us to apply loads on it, and really, truly, it can be the types of loads that we'd see during walking, during running, during lifting weights. And so not only can we get living tissue in there, but we can prepare it for its job when it goes into the body, which is critical for its success because if you put it in there without preparing it, it's going to fail and it's not going to do the things that we really need it to do in order to be a better solution for joint replacement. One of the advantages of cartilage is it doesn't have a risk of rejection. Cartilage is what we call immune privilege. 
So even though we'd use organ donor tissue, and the reason we want to do that is then we can get the best cartilage so we can get young, very healthy cartilage to make a new joint for you from an organ donor, and your body will not reject it. It's protected tissue like bone, which is, of course, not the case with something like liver or kidney where it would be rejected. So that's one of our advantages in this endeavor. It will likely take at least five years before Dr. Cook and his team will be ready to take the research to clinical trials in humans. I'm Debbie Johnson.